Hi, I'm Bentley Radcliffe. Um, I've been in sales and sales strategy, performance and enablement for about 25 years. Um, I've designed software for sales teams and enablement tools such as the virtual sales kit that we sold uh, for many years, competitive tools such as the battle tables and, um, and a number of different companies. I've worked with a lot of large enterprise businesses uh, and I'm very proud of what I've done. Just recently published a a book called Checkmate, Mastering Competitive Sales Strategy. I hope you have a chance to take a look at it and learn from some of the things that I've learned over the years. Oh, there's a whole lot about this conference. Some amazing people here. Um, I learned some things, you know, you think you can never learn anything new. Uh, and they always have, somebody has something new that they can bring along. Um, there was some great parts about uh, leadership. Uh, I'm very big on, on leadership and coaching and managing as well as a, um, some very good information on you know, the difference between uh, product sales and solution versus consultative selling. Um, it was a really great session on diversity and how you can do better in the business because we all could do better in that area. So these are kind of things I really love. Of course, I love the fact that it's um, in my hometown in the, you know, the Kennedy Space Center because I'm a space buff and uh, I think this is the coolest place in the world. My topic was on um, preemptive competitive sales strategy. Um, I have five major strategies that you can implement as a augment to your sales process. Um, we call it COLTS for color code of accounts. Uh, opportunity questioning, so you're defining the questions to be more aligned to the, um, to, the, to, the, to the account and the situation you have in the account. Uh, loss recovery strategy, the concept of never lose completely, always win something, find um, an opportunity. When you have a sale, I'm always going to go for the big deal, but I always want to have a backup deal in place so that I can, I can make that prospect into a customer, because it's far easier to sell a customer, even if I've only sold them a small thing. And the nice thing about loss recovery is it draws on human nature. You know, 80% of decision making is emotional. I hate to tell a salesperson that I've been working with for six months or three months or however, that they're not going to get the deal. By giving the customer something else to be able to hand to that, uh, to that salesperson, even if it's a small piece, makes them feel better. And from the salesperson point of view, while it may not have made their quota, they have a piece of business to go after next year, and they're a customer, and that's the best part of it. So those are kind of the, the key things. We talked about trapping and silver bullet strategies and other strategies I've put into the book, but um, those are some of my favorites. What could negative in impact sales? Obviously, um, right now we're sitting on the edge of a potential recession. It's hard to tell whether it's gonna happen. As companies start to cut budgets, I mean, we're in a natural time. It's, it's late in the year, they cut budgets to try to bring up margins for the end of the year, especially if they're public companies. So I think that can impact sales at the close of the year. Going into the new year, um, if budgets are cut, then training gets cut. A number of the things that make salespeople more productive get cut, and that could impact sales. Um, the other things that could impact sales is just the mindset of people, uh, especially people older like myself that are not used to the virtual side where the younger people are, are really taking advantage of, of using that virtual selling model. And it's a, the buyer and the seller that, that fall into that. So those are things that can impact them. In 2023, uh, I think that the more process and helping sellers simplify uh, everything they're doing. Right now, we've gotten a, a little bit tool crazy in 2022, um, and a lot of them don't work together, or if they work together, they all have different interfaces. So it takes a lot of time from salespeople. And if you're looking at it, sales enablement and revenue enablement, I mean, you want to make them more efficient. You want to give them more time back out selling, less time having to, to, to deal with these tools. Uh, while the tools give you an enormous amount of information, um, and analytics, to, it's got, it does take time away. So that's one of the things that, um, that they can do in, in, in 2023. It's like it's all about efficiency and, and, and enabling their performance, um, not necessarily figuring that everybody has to work the same way. Um, and that's what a lot of these tools do. But you know, there, there are, it really is dependent upon um, the kind of company and what you sell, and that's going to have impact as well.
This is my second conference, um, and I have found that what differs from this, from things like um, you know the sales enablement conferences that they put on, is that you're talking to people that have really done it at Seal 3.0, and I really like to hear those people. There's an awful lot of people out there that will talk about the capabilities and the tools and all of it, but they've actually never put their foot out and been a salesperson. When you come here, you're listening to people that have been there, have done that, and when they speak, they speak from experience. And, and truthfully, experience is, is, is what it's all about. Um, young salespeople learn from seasoned salespeople. And, and there's plenty of seasoned salespeople here to go around. And that's, that's as I said, what has been the best part about today is just, I thought I knew so much, and then I hear things that I never even thought about. And that really brought it out. In, in some of the other conferences I've attended, and I like to attend a lot of virtual conferences because I love to meet people and talk to people, um, they're great subjects, but I haven't done it. So from a revenue point of view, um, I do have an opinion about revenue management. I think revenue management and um, revenue enablement should actually share in the quota. Um, that would actually put them more into the sales field, but at least be completely aware of you know, making that budget, making that number, that quota, um, and help them get there. And that's, that's kind of where I see it.